Slicers are an excellent tool for adding user interactivity into our reports. So when a user clicks on a slicer button, everything filters and updates to include only the items that they have selected. Now slicers are compatible with pivot tables, pivot charts, cube functions, and tables, but they're not compatible with standard formulas. Well, today I want to turn that around and show you a method that you can use so that you can make slicers work with standard formulas. So if you're ready, let's get started. For our scenario, we have two main data tables. We have the actual table and a budget table. And what we want to create is a simple report that shows actual budget and the variance between the two, which is controlled by a slicer. Now we could use a pivot table. We could join these two tables together into a single table, but we don't want to do that. We could also combine these two tables together inside a data model, but we don't want to do that. We want to keep these simple tables as they are. So what I have here is a list of all the possible items that we could have in our two tables. So that's how we categorize them. So I'm going to insert a slicer just by clicking on that table. I'm going to insert and selecting slicer. Now it recognizes that we only have one column in that table. So I'll select list and then click OK. Now I don't necessarily want the slicer on this worksheet. So I'm going to select that, press Control X and then move it onto my report tab. And I'll paste that with Control V. Right, we've now created our slicer, but it's not really connected to anything yet. We can see that whenever we click our slicer, it changes the item inside this list table. So each time we click, you can see that it filters that table by the different elements. So what formula do we need to find out which items are visible and which items are not? Well, in this scenario, we can use a subtotal function. So in the header there, I'm going to call this include, and then I'm going to insert a new formula. So equals subtotal, open bracket. So in there, all the items from one to 11 are the same as standard functions, but all the items that start with 100, so 101, all the way up to 111, will they ignore hidden rows. So that means if I use the count a function and I apply it to just the single row inside my table, close that bracket and press return, you can see that it has one against each of those items in the include column. Now, when I come back to my slicer, if I select two items, for example, and come back to my data table, you can see that it still says include in that column. Let me now prove to you that this doesn't include the items that have not been selected. So if I type a standard sum function, click on the include column, close that bracket and press return, you'll see that it only returns two. And that's because the other items have zero against them because they are excluded from that sub total calculation. So that means if we want to, we can come across to our report tab and in the slicer selected column there, I can type equals filter open bracket. Now, what array do I want? Well, from my data table, I want my list column and I want to include that list column where include equals one. And if it's empty, I'll return the text, no values. Now close that bracket and press return. As you can see, we now have Alpha and Bravo selected. If I choose more items from my slicer, you can see that they are returned inside those cells. So now we have a slicer which is controlling cell values. Okay, let's add some more formulas to bring in our actual, our budget and our variance values. So for actual, I type equals sum ifs open bracket the sum range we want is the value 
we want that where the item is equal to the return of the filter function and I'll use the spill range by entering a hash and I'll press return. As you can see, those three results have now spilled into that range. Let's do the same for the budget section. So equals sum ifs, open bracket. The sum range you want is the value. The criteria range is the item. And we want that where it equals C5 hash. And I'll close that bracket there. And now we just want the variance between the two. So equals actual minus budget. We need to add hash onto both of those to pick up the spill range. I'll press return and there we go. We now have a simple report which returns only those items that we have selected from our slicer. So here we have connected slicers to formulas. Okay, that's a nice simple method, but you might be thinking, what if we don't want to have an include column in our table. Well, in that scenario, we can use a lambda function. So if we want to use this second method, then we do need a lambda enabled version of Excel. I must also say thank you to Giancarlo for providing this solution in a comment on one of our blog posts. So let's have a look at how this works. I'm going to start here by typing equals lambda and then open bracket. The first argument inside Lambda is the parameter. Our parameter I'm going to call X. We then want to perform the subtotal function. So subtotal, open bracket. For this, we don't need to include just the hidden rows. We can perform this calculation on all the rows. So therefore, all I need is my function num of three, which is count A. Now, what do I want to perform this subtotal calculation on? Well, I want to perform it on X. So whatever the parameter is that is passed into my Lambda function, that's what I want to perform it on inside my subtotal function. So I'll close that bracket to close my Lambda. Now, I also need to use a Lambda helper function, and that is called by row, so by row. And by row enables us to use the same lambda function in every row in an array. So I'll come across to my data table, select my list column, I'll enter a comma, and then I can close the by row function. Now I'll press return just so we can see the results to date. As you can see, we have one, 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 and then all the remaining items are zero. And these ones and zeros correlate to the items that are selected in our slicer. So if I select alpha and hotel, you see the first item and the last item are selected. Which means if we come back to our lambda, then we apply our filter. So equals filter, open bracket. We want to apply that to our list function again. I'll enter a comma. Now in Excel, ones are true and zeros are false. So therefore, when we press return on that, it's only the items with one against them that are returned by our Lambda function. Then if I copy all of this over here, we now have two methods of working with slices and standard formulas. We have the table method, that requires us to add an additional include column. And we have the Lambda method where we don't even need to add a new column. So that's it. That's how we can use slices with formulas inside Excel. It doesn't give us this ability natively, but we can use a few workarounds to make this work for us. It's a really great technique to help us add interactivity into our reports. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.